up this peaceful road from Fort Brooke toward Fort King came Major Francis L. Dade and his 107 men. Fort Brooke in 1835 was today's Tampa. Fort King, 106 miles up this military road, is now Ocala. For five days, the Seminoles had stealthily observed the march of Dade's column on its way to reinforce the small garrison at Fort King. Unknown to Major Dade's command, the Seminole chiefs, Osceola, Micanopi, and Alligator, had planned to attack Dade's men and kill General Thompson, the Indian agent at Fort King. Two-thirds of the march had been covered, and the open country here seemed to require less vigilance. Flanking scouts were withdrawn. The day was chilly, and the men trudged along in coats buttoned over their ammunition boxes. At 8 o'clock in the morning on December 28, 1835, the first shot felled Major Dade. The men scrambled for cover and returned fire. They had a small cannon with them, and after firing them a couple of times, the Seminoles withdrew. The soldiers took the opportunity to cut down some trees and build a breastwork. The Seminole chief called Alligator later recounted that the Great Spirit made them put themselves into a box to make their slaughter easier. The second phase of the battle lasted until 2 p.m. Most of the force of 108 men had been killed. The wounded were dispatched by the enemy quickly after the battle ended with the exception of three members of Major Dade's force who survived the attack and returned to Fort Brooke. Chief Alligator claimed that three of his warriors were killed and only five were wounded. The scene of the ambush remained deserted for seven weeks. Finally, on February 20th, 1836, an expedition under General Gaines arrived here. Lieutenant James Duncan later recalled, Gracious God, what a sight! The vultures rose in clouds as the approach of the column drove them from their prey. The very breastwork was black with them. Some hovered over us as we looked upon the scene before us, whilst others settled upon the adjoining trees waiting for our departure in order again to return to their prey. The interior of the breastwork was covered with the bodies of the slain, as they had been left by their savage foe. The bodies of all the officers were identified, and many of the soldiers. Duncan and his men gave the dead a proper burial with military rites, placing officers' bodies on the east side of the trail and the enlisted men in two graves within the redoubt. The Second Seminole War had begun. <laughs>